Merry Christmas, everybody. Let's talk about a movie. Wonder Woman 1984. This is the sequel to the extremely popular and successful film from 2017, Wonder Woman, a movie that I quite enjoyed. I didn't love it. I think I gave it a 7 out of 10, but I liked it quite a bit. I thought it was well-directed. I liked the, the World War I aesthetic. You had some good moments of humor, some good action, great chemistry between the leads. I, I liked that movie quite a bit, and it made me excited for this film, and I was kind of skeptical. I thought the trailers were okay. Okay, obviously this thing had been pushed back because of the pandemic, but I was looking forward to watching it on the day after Christmas in this year of COVID, and I've seen it, and uh, it's not good. It's not good at all. This is this is quite a bad movie. In fact, it's it's shockingly bad at points. I won't say I hated it, but I'm I'm thoroughly disappointed. Much like with all films, there are things that are good and there are things that are bad, and I will start off with what I liked. You know, this movie takes place in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, a beautiful city, and, and there there's some good shots. You know, Patty Jenkins is a good director, whether it be with Monster or the first Wonder Woman or now this. You know, she's she's great at shot composition. Cinematography is, is fairly nice. There's some great scenes of the Washington Monument, of the White House. It, it's a good-looking movie. It's, it's competent made. I can't knock Patty Jenkins for how she directed this movie, at least in terms of, of cinematography. There's some good performances here. I like Chris Pine. Chris Pine's a good actor, and I, I know Hollywood is kind of run by the Chris's, whether it be Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Pratt, Chris Castellani, but I, I feel like Chris Pine kind of gets overlooked. Very charismatic. I always like him in movies. He's, he's a professional actor, and I think he, he brought his A-game to this. I wish he would have been given more to do, but he's good. I, I enjoyed watching him in this movie. Pedro Pascal, who who's obviously, he's been in a lot of stuff. He was in Game of Thrones. He was in Narcos, but he's kind of blown up because he's the main character on The Mandalorian. He His character is written very poorly, but he's having a lot of fun with this. I like him. I, I think, I, I looked it up. This guy's 45. It's kind of amazing, given his charisma, that it took him this long to become a movie star because uh, he, he's got that X factor. Given the kind of, you know, world that we're living in right now with COVID and movies being put straight to streaming services, I, I do think there will be a lot of people who will watch this movie and enjoy it quite a bit. It's a populist escapism cinema, but as someone who is a fan of film, as someone who's a huge fan of comic book films, I I viewed this movie as a tremendous, tremendous disappointment. There's many things about this movie that I really did not like, and that's what I'm going to talk about now. This film is a two and a half hour movie about a, a stone that grants people wishes. It's a MacGuffin movie, and I'm not saying that's completely awful. Now, it's stupid, and it shouldn't be two and a half hours for a movie that is that simplistic, for a premise that is that simplistic. The movie is not well written at all. Character motivations don't make any sense. Scenes just happen. There is absolutely zero flow from one scene to the next. There, There's moments, there's scenes that happen, but nothing that connects. It's like you could take almost every scene of this movie, put it at a different point in the movie, and you'd miss nothing nothing. There's no natural progression of, of scenes. There's no natural flow. The movie is not well written. The premise is really, really bad. You know, I, I praised Chris Pine. I praised pa Pedro Pascal. Kristen Wiig is a great actress. She's, I mean, I grew up on watching her on SNL, I, I think, and I'm an SNL historian. I mean, she's in the top five in terms of, of all-time female SNL performers. I think she's just amazing. She is very bad in this movie and terribly miscast. Her character is ugly and materialistic and shallow, but not in a good way. Not in a way that, like, Patrick Bateman is materialistic and shallow and superficial because he's charismatic and funny. She's an ugly character. She's a poorly written character. Her motivations aren't good. Her character is no different. Somebody pointed this out to me, and it's true. Her character is really no different from Jamie Foxx in, in uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2. I mean, it's basically kind of the same motivations. That was a movie that got ripped. For some reason, people are given this pile of junk a pass. I, I, I don't get that. Emma Stone, and you know, I, I mean, I've been in love with Emma Stone since I was 13, was originally offered this role, and I see completely why she turned it down, because this is so beneath her, and this is going to be the controversial take. Gail Gadot seems like a gem of a human being, and she, she is well cast as Wonder Woman, and she captures the physicality of the role. She, she captures kind of the majesty that comes with playing a character like this. I mean, I mean, look at the woman. She's like sculpted out of marble. She's, she's amazing, but 
She's not a very good actress. I, I And I hate that I got to be the first person to kind of point that out. Her range is really limited. She's very flat. Now, in the moments where she has to be majesty and the moments where she has to be royalty and everyone looks at her in awe, the moments where she has to kind of capture the physicality of the role and she needs to hit the action beats hard, it does work. But there's several moments in this movie where the emotional beats have to hit and they don't work because... She doesn't have any subtlety to her performances. I, I mean, she's very flat in a lot of moments. There's a big emotional scene. I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a big emotional scene kind of at the end of the second act between her and Chris Pine, and I just didn't buy her at all. And I understand why she was cast, and you know, I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have in the role, really, but I feel like the first movie did a great job of catering to her strengths. This one did not. I did not think she was very good in this film at all. I, I get angry watching a movie like this because I love comic book movies. Comic book movies have, have been kind of the gateway to my imagination for so long, and I've seen comic book movies that have great, tight stories and great narratives and have a consistent tone. That's a big problem with this movie. Tonally, this movie is awful. There's moments where it is complete camp, where it's trying to be the Joel Schumacher Batman movies, and then there's moments where it's trying to be really dark and, and, and terrible, and the stakes are really high. I mean, the fate of the world is at stake in this movie, and you just, you don't buy it. And I, uh, you know, it's Christmas. I kind of feel like a Grinch, because I, I think there will be people who are going to enjoy this movie quite a bit. I think there will be people who will find this movie amusing and funny and empowering, it didn't do it for me, and this is coming from someone who liked the first one quite a bit, but I think there's some problems with this movie that kind of betrayed some of the themes that were set up in the first film. The script is is quite bad, and I, I, get, I get pissed because, like, DC has become a film studio, or the DCEU, the extended universe, has become a punching bag, and it has its defenders. You know, there's all those people who talked about how much they wanted to see the Snyder Cut and how they feel like that series of films was... Uh, unfairly portrayed or unfairly reviewed or, or watched and I I watched this and it's like you kind of got what you deserved most DCEU products have been bad Joker was a great movie I liked Birds of Prey a lot but for the most part like these movies are messes this is not a good film at all I give it a 4 out of 10 I'm disappointed by Wonder Woman 1984 and if you enjoy it enjoy it have fun with your Christmas. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to. I don't want to throw coal in your stocking. You know. Wow. I'm really hammering home the the Christmas puns here. But yeah. I'm, uh, I was disappointed by this movie, and I wish it would have been better. All right, so that'll do it for this review. You can follow me on Twitter at Castellani2014. I'm on kind of a Twitter hiatus here, but you're welcome to follow me anyway. Please click that like button. Please click that subscribe button. Let's get those watch hours up, up, up. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Stay safe out there. Have a great Christmas. Have a great rest of your holiday. Peace and happiness. Have a good one.